this is it. This is my hammock setup. What's up backpackers? I'm Dan and welcome back to Backpacking Adventures where we talk about everything backpacking, hiking, and gear. And if those interest you, consider subscribing and make sure you hit that bell notification so you don't miss a thing. Now I've been hammock camping now for a few years and in my last video I went over my tarp setup. Now in this video I'm going to go over what my hammock setup is including all the mods, all my customizations, and all of my quilts. Now in my last video when I talked about my tarp I had mentioned that tarps and everything are customizable and there's many different shapes, sizes, designs, colors, the whole nine yards. Well the same is with hammock. You can pick the colors, the sizes, the material, even the threads sometimes. All different kinds of suspension. So in this video this is just the way I have chose to set it up. It doesn't mean it's right or wrong. It's just the way I like it. Now my latest hammock is the Dutchware Chameleon. Now this thing is totally customizable. There's many options you can get, add-ons. You can get a bug netting, you can get a top cover. This comes in all different kinds of colors and prints. And you can even get the bug netting with a print on it. Now this is an 11 foot hammock made from Hexon 1.6, which is 57 inches wide. And it is symmetrical, meaning you can lay any direction, head on any side, feet on any side. Now you can purchase many different components for this. I chose to purchase the bug netting and the top cover with the moonlight roof. Now you can leave the bug netting on or the top cover or you can just remove everything and just go netless. Now this is the zippered on bug net and again you can fully remove this and this just helps keep some of the bugs out. You can of course use this in the winter time and it does uh, help keep in some warmth but not much. That's what the top cover is for. Now one of the mods I have done with this zipper netting is on what I would deem as the foot end is I have a length of cord. Now the reason I have this is because a lot of times I'll unzip my hammock and I will go to get in and when I go to get in I lay down and I realize I can't reach the zipper so I can use my foot or whatever just to pull on that line and it works great and I have it on both sides. This extra cord just keeps me from having to get back out of the hammock. One of the components you can get is a top cover. This is for colder weather and this will block some of the wind and it will also keep some of the warmth inside of your hammock. Now it's not waterproof, it's not meant to replace a shelter, but the one I chose has a moonlit roof which you can remove or just unzip or set aside and you can have some ventilation. And for both the netting and the top cover you can get what they call a sidecar that hangs down on whatever side you pick and it's basically another storage it's made out of the mesh or the same uh, material as a top cover and you can just store things in there I didn't chose that I have plenty of storage now how do I store all my stuff in this hammock well I put a couple add-ons that allow me to store pretty much all of my gear this is a mesh ridgeline loft from hammock gear and this thing is big and you can adjust it and move it across down on your ridge line. These are just little pressing knots to connect it. And this thing, I usually just put my clothes bag in here. This is my ridge line organizer. This is from Dream Hammock. It has six pockets, three on each side, and the whole center opens up so you can put in a water bottle if you want to. Me, I don't. I'm always afraid they're going to leak, so, but that option is there. Next, I have the Peak Loft from Dutchware and this connects to the hammock. Now this one is specific to this hammock, but you can get them for other hammocks. And it's just a big sack that you can, right now I just have my top cover in, but you can put anything in there and move it out of the way. Now I also have this little piece of shock cord with this little clip. And what I use this for is I connect my pillow to it. So basically if it falls down behind me, I can pick it up or if it falls out of the hammock, it's not gonna hit the ground. And if I'm already in the hammock, I don't wanna to have to get back out. I can just pull it up by the shock cord. So the suspension system that I chose for this is basically a strap. And this is a spider poly strap with a cinch buckle. And the cinch buckle I chose is from Dutchware and it's called the beetle buckle. Most cinch buckles are basically attached and almost permanently attached to your hammock. So if they get wet, you have to unthread them and remove them from your hammock if they will get wet because of the rain. This you don't have to. These just simply just unhook and they hook back on. And they're very easy to adjust. You can just pull 
and pull them apart and they easily adjust. So far, these are the easiest cinch buckles that I found anywhere. And these are 15 feet straps. And the, the reason why I chose to have a cinch buckle type suspension is because you can fine tune it and it can go anywhere you wanna pull it or slide it. If you would use a daisy chain for your suspension, that's fine. But to me, you're kind of limited on where you can put it on those loops. You can't fine tune it in between those loops. It's that or, or nothing, or you go to the next one. What these are attached with is what's called a Dutch clip. And I have it that's permanently attached to this so I don't lose it. And you can just wrap it around the tree and just connect it and it's, there it is. Now, I get asked a lot what these little yellow lines are. And what these are just regular pieces of, I think, zingit or lashit cord. And I tie them on as, with Prestic knots. And what they are, they're called drip lines. So when it's raining out, you really need to have what's called water breaks on your suspension. And basically, if it rains, the water can come down from the tree or just the raindrops can come down and it will run down your suspension. And this is technically a water break where it, the water will drip down. Now, if it would happen to get past this, this is my last line of defense. I always keep this and my drip lines, my cinch buckles and drip lines under my tarp, number one. But basically what will happen is the lines, the water will run down, hit these lines, and then just drip back down to the ground. And I can tell you, they work wonderfully. I've been in many rainstorms where these are soaking wet, the water's dripping down, but my hammock is totally dry. So a lot of people, take them with them, they don't keep them on. I just keep them on my hammock all the time. That way, I never have to worry about it. So the weight for this overall setup with the bug net attached is 31 ounces. And with the top cover attached, it's about 33 ounces. And this has a weight capacity of 350 pounds. So now how do I stay warm in this hammock? Well, I have various top quilts and under quilts. And again, under quilt is just something, basically a sleeping bag that goes underneath your hammock. So now for the warmer months, I use a 40 degree top quilt from Hammock Gear, it's called the Burrow. And I use a 30 degree under quilt also from Hammock Gear called the Phoenix. Now this is a three quarter length under quilt, which means it basically gives you coverage from behind your shoulders to about your knee, maybe mid calf. And that's all you really need in the warmer months. And if you get cold, you can easily just put a sit pad in your foot box of your top quilt and you'll be fine. Now, the reason why I use a three quarter length is because number one, there's less material, which means less weight and it's also cheaper. And with this under quilt from hammock gear, it's also tapered, meaning it has less material at the bottom of the hammock than it does at the top because you don't need that. It just needs to cover your feet. This will cover me for a good seven to eight months out of the year, probably mid spring to mid fall and including the summer. So this is the set that I use absolutely the most. These will get me comfortably in the temperature ranges of the lows of probably mid thirties. I have had that set out when it was 32 degrees and I was totally fine. Now, how I like to do it is if it's gonna be around 10 to 15 degrees to the temperature rating, I will switch to my next warmer set. So in other words, if it's gonna be in the forties, low forties, I'll probably take my 20 degree set instead. So for my next set of quilts, this is my 20 degree set of quilts. This consists of a 20 degree hammock gear burrow top quilt and a 20 degree hammock gear Phoenix under quilt. Again, a three quarter length. And I use these quilts for pretty much mid fall to mid spring and the winter. And usually around temperatures hovering between the 20s and the 30s, but not really any lower than that. And I get a good five months use out of these. So my next set of quilts are my zero degree quilts and I use them for very cold weather. And they consist of a zero degree hammock gear burrow top quilt and a zero degree incubator under quilt, which is a full length under quilt. And the difference is this goes from a little bit above my head and it totally covers below my feet. I felt that if it's gonna be that cold, I'd just rather have a full length under quilt to totally keep me warm. Now, as far as using my zero degree quilts, I only use them on a few occasions when the temperature is gonna get close to zero or below 20 degrees, which is not very often around where I live. Now, if you had to get a hammock set up and you had to choose with one set of quilts, I would recommend getting a 20 degree set because they will last you all the way from most of the winter and they will cover you through summer, spring and fall, 
depending on your, your area and your temperature radius. If it's around where I live in central Pennsylvania, it'll cover you for most of the year. And one of the last pieces of gear I have for my hammock setup is the underquilt protector. This is an underquilt protector from hammock gear. And basically what this does is this gives you coverage from up near the top of your hammock, all the way down near the foot of your hammock. And you can see your underquilt is in there, nice and protected. I take this on every trip. And what this does is, first of all, it will help keep your underquilts clean. And these things are a pretty hefty investment for a lot of the underquilts and top quilts as well. This will help keep them dry. It also helps when it's raining and if there's rain splashing up, it'll help keep your underquilt dry because if it's down, again, if your down gets wet, it loses all of its R value. And the last thing is this will add an extra maybe five to 10 degrees, they say, of warmth to your hammock setup. And in the winter time, I will use this in conjunction with the top cover to give me full coverage to help keep that warmth in. So that's it. That's my entire hammock setup, including my suspension, all my underquilts, top quilts, and my underquilt protector, and all the storage and all the little add-ons and everything else. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and share, and make sure you subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.